They're hungry. Your dinner. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Feast. Help me, somebody. Feast is an independent movie that came out in 2005 as a result of Project Greenlight. Project Greenlight was a documentary series where an amateur filmmaker was given the opportunity to make a feature film, and we would watch the process of making an independent movie. And then the movie that was made would actually get released. The movies were produced by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. The first time they tried this, the series was good, but the movie kinda sucked. But the next time around, they got Wes Craven on as an executive producer, and they focused on the making of an independent horror movie. That movie being Feast. I can't see a thing. The premise of Feast is very simple. It's been used in numerous horror movies. A group of people are trapped in a building, and there's something outside trying to kill them. We've seen this plot in Night of the Living Dead, Evil Dead, The Mist, The Strangers. We've even seen it outside of the horror genre in movies like Assault on Precinct 13. We get the same thing in Feast. It takes place in a bar in the middle of the desert. It's getting close to closing time, and all of a sudden this guy comes busting in. Listen to me. A storm of hell's coming down on this place any second. I don't know what they are. I don't know where they came from. The next thing we know, the bar is under attack by a clan of monsters who are hungry for human flesh. The bar patrons batten down the hatches, and we get to enjoy a lot of blood splatter. like to support independent films. It's nice to get away from mainstream movies once in a while. Independent cinema takes a lot more chances than a lot of Hollywood movies today. The plot of Feast is pretty thin, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for monsters and blood. The opening scene sets the tone for the movie. We get into this bar, and as we're introduced to all the characters, their stats pop up their names, or at least nicknames, their occupation, and their chances of survival. It's really funny. Asshole. You don't know my wife. <laughs> right away, we're shown that we're in for a good time. But don't put too much stock into those stats, because they are meaningless. What I love about this movie is how it subverts your expectations. It does have some of those predictable moments that are in horror movies, but for the most part, you have no idea what way this movie's gonna go. Like the moment when the badass comes into the bar. Yeah, this is our hero for the movie. He's got a shotgun in one hand and the head of one of these monsters in the other and we're just waiting for him to kick some ass. I'm the guy that's gonna save your ass. That just happened. We've barely even started this movie, and the guy that we were so sure was going to be the hero is killed off. He's been on screen for less than two minutes, and he gets his head ripped off. Don't worry, his wife comes in to take the role of badass, but it doesn't matter, because after that moment, we know that anybody could die in this movie. Bear me. There are people in this movie that you do not expect to die, and they kill them off. It creates the perfect atmosphere of nobody's safe. The movie does suffer from a case of asshole characters. 
There are people in this movie who are dicks just for the sake of being dicks and you're waiting for them to get killed. Luckily, most of the characters are likable, so you have someone to root for. We gotta talk about the gore. The splatter in Feast has that Evil Dead 2 quality to it. Slime and blood get sprayed everywhere. Over everything and everyone. <laughs> It gets so gratuitous at times that you can't help but laugh. It's the right amount of over-the-top gore. The monsters never just kill someone. All the deaths are bloody. No one is allowed to die normally. I love the monsters, their design, and their mannerisms. These are some of the most vicious creatures I've seen in horror. And not just because they're deadly. They're also horny. These monsters will do one of three things. Kill you. Fuck you, then kill you or kill you, then fuck you. They like food that moves. As great as the monster scenes are, they do suffer from one big problem. For me, at least. See if you can spot it. Shaky Cam. I don't like Shaky Cam. There are times where it can work, but for the most part, it's annoying. I get why directors use it, either to help hide cheap effects, or to make the scene seem more chaotic. But you don't need that. The effects in Feast are really good, and you don't need this to make the scene more chaotic. It's chaotic enough. Just let the natural chaos of the situation take over the scene. What if I did my reviews like this? Annoying, isn't it? Keep the camera still. Other than that, it's a good monster movie. If you're looking for a simple, bloody horror flick, this is a fun one. Now, for my next video, I'm going to be talking about another horror movie that came out post-2000. It's very similar to Feast. A group of people trapped in a house with monsters trying to kill them and a lot of bloodshed. It makes for a good double feature with Feast, so I wanted to talk about it next. Stay tuned. Now let me ask you, what's your favorite gory monster movie? The bloodier, the better. This is your buddy Justin, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. Great, now I gotta board up the doors.